Well, we first burned up a fight, they had a left clear fight, um, which is like burned up a tar box in my bed butts. So a guy who I had a bit of bad, bad blood, blood with, he was like 90 kilo as well. Um, we were going to have a fight outside, um, I went and he sent me his address, I went to his house and he wouldn't come out and said he wanted that on a proper show. Well, I was like, well, we either do it safe on the show, I'm just going <laughs> to smash his head in. You know, like, like, we'll uh, put it on the show, so I put it on and ended up stopping him in the fourth round. Uh, but that was the first bare knuckle. The second bare knuckle was King of the Streets, I believe. So I was working away, I was working in Finland, and that video uh, went viral of Liam Wilson sort of kicking a guy in the head. And uh, we were on the drink, <laughs> and everyone was like, you'd do that, wouldn't you? I was like, ah, yeah. So I messaged the King of the Streets uh, to try and get a fight. They just didn't get back to me for ages. And then all of a sudden, I looked back to us with um, said, oh, there's an Italian guy that wants to fight you. Can you come to Sweden and fight? I mean, it's hard for me to say, no, we'll fight anyway. Next thing I know, I'm sending the passport details and I'm flying to Sweden. So I'm fighting a car back. And um, so, yeah, when we went, when we got there, we got picked up. Uh, they were making a documentary as well, so we were driving about with Teslas. Um, the recording was asking us about violence. Um, they tried to like, ask us stupid questions like, what's your, your, what's your youngest memory of being violent? But like, I wasn't really violent as a kid, I was just like just a normal kid that used to just get knocked all the time. So I was just like, oh, I didn't really start fighting until I was like 15, 16. I'm like, no, no, you, you've got to say, like, I used to fight in the school fields to see what they had to do and stuff. So, yeah, so uh, I hope they don't put that in because you look like an absolute robber, but. Yeah, that's the type of stuff we had to do. And then they took us to the Sky Warehouse where they give us some clothes and stuff. And it was just like, you could just see all these people, like the naughty people, gangsters. Um, took us to our hotel. Fair play, we were in a five-star hotel, got well looked after. Um, every time we needed a lift somewhere, they were, they were there. Took us to the Wayne. Um, the guy pushed me at the Wayne after we were squaring off. Uh, and then the next day it was a fight. Um, fight I think it lasted about a minute, a minute and a half. Um but because it was in a car bag on concrete, the last thing you want to do is stand in that and like punch people in the face because at some point someone is gonna die by hitting the air of the concrete. So I just feel like if if you are gonna do that type of fight then you do have some wrestling and jujitsu you just wait when the fight where you both go home safe to take him down and choke him out or I'll do something like that. Take him down and beat him up when he's already on the floor. Um, and that's what I'd done. Uh, he said he was going to bite me, and his head came close, and I like pushed him away. And then we managed to get on the floor, and it just felt like he didn't know what he what he was doing, like a fish out of water. Even though he, I think he had like eleven pro MMA fights, so I expected him to to have a bit about him. But after that, it was just like wrestling with a child. Just turned him over, took his back, and choked him. Um, got paid, went home, and the opportunities that came from that, and the following went a little. I think I had like a thousand followers, it went from a thousand to four thousand, then the opportunities came after that. Ben Waddington was the one after that. Um, he was like, he was fucking 20 stone or something. I think that lasted about 10 minutes. <laughs> I had concussion after that fight. I, I, when I was driving home, I had my head on, on the dashboard, just felt sick all the way home. And then uh, there was Bash, the Bash fight, where he tried to bite the ear, and that's the reason we had the, the fight on the bridge, and then I won them too. So we're back at um, the place where I fought Bash at, the famous bridge. Um, the reason me and Bash actually had a fight on this bridge is I did have a burn up a boxing fight with him and he tried to bite me, tried to bite me twice before just leaving the, the hair bills. Um, the internet blew up after that and said that if it was a no rules fight I wouldn't win the fight. Um, so I was like, right, okay, <laughs> let's have a no rules fight. So he drove all the way from Hastings with his girlfriend. We met at this bridge. He came up this side, I came up the other. We met in the middle and I just took him to the floor and pounded his head in. Nice and easy, I think it lasted about 20 seconds if that. Um, and then he had a long drive home, a massive earache off his bed probably. But yeah, this is the bridge. The worst part about this was it's a public place. So there's like people walking across all the time and at the time, there was a poor woman that came across with her kids and we're about to have a fight and then you've got people stood on the bridge that were with Bash and Balaclavas she's walking across like God knows how she felt <laughs> but I came up these stairs, he came up that and then about to get it on so we just walked to each other we met 
probably he's somewhere somewhere here. You can see his punch coming from fucking back down there. He started throwing it when he got up the stairs. So I just ducked under, with the head in his chest, picked them up, put them down. Um, he was framed on his head as he tried to get up, booted him, lost my shoe. I'm not going to step down because it's fucking wet. <laughs> booted him, managed to get the side control. It was bang, 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 bang. Like them little fucking machines in the arcade, you know, where you got the hammer and the crocodiles pop up. Doink, doink, doink. <laughs> Come on, Robbie lad. Come on, Robbie lad. Oh, Robbie. Come on, lad. Come on, keep going. Keep going, Robbie. Go on. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going, mate. Come on. Finish it. Elbows. Elbows. That's it, Robbie. Son. That's it. Come on, lad. Keep going. That's it. Keep going. That's it. Don't. Fucking nice. Fucking easy work, Robbie. After this fight, actually, after this fight. This was the reason I actually fought Decker. Um, Decker wanted me and Bash to fight on his platform so he could make the money from it. Because we never fought on his platform. Done what he's usually done, just went took to uh, took to YouTube, had a couple of drinks and started calling me and calling me a rat and a snake and this, that and the other. Obviously my ego gets the better of me. <laughs> so, so I rang him and I was like, I'm gonna punch your fucking head in. And then uh, it was a bit of back and forth. Um, then we decided to have that fight. Um, that was under the year 19 flyover. So this is a uh, this is a place where the deck fight happened. Obviously, as you can see, a lot of different things are changing under here. And um, we just fought on this gravel, and obviously the plan was to stay away from his big right hand, big fat cunt. Um, didn't want to get hit by one of them, did I? Um, so the plan was to southpaw stance, so my head was away, just built his leg, just keep moving away from his power. Uh, when I had the opportunity to take him to the floor. Um, he was very strong, so obviously the first time I done that, I struggled a little bit, he managed to get back to his feet. Um, the second time, I managed to keep him down, just rain down the elbows, split the back of his head, absolutely dripping with blood. See, there's, a, there's been, the internet blew up and said that I tapped the decker, he was on all fours, he, he was laid on top of me, just round me like that. He had no choke on whatsoever, which we'll, uh, we'll go into that and show you a video on, on that. Um, so he said, do you want to get up? I said, yeah, he didn't get up. I was like, do you want to get up? Like it's an acknowledgement, anyone that does jiu-jitsu knows that. Um, obviously the people saying that fucking don't have a scooby do in the profile pictures usually a fucking carrot. Obviously he got up ready to fight, like that's it, like when I, when I done that he didn't think, oh yeah, let's go, it's another fight, he just got up. Like uh, it's, it's clear as day to see. Um, I've got messages off him as well that says don't listen to them, you know, you never tapped. <laughs> he tapped on my back towards the end of the fight. Uh, if I went and said, oh, he, he tapped when it was a clear, no, it's an acknowledgement, like, you're, you're having a fight, you know, like, things happen in the fight that, uh, that are just fucking, it's just one of them things. Um, anyone who, everyone's entitled to the opinion, if you think I tapped and lost the fight, that's, that's completely on you, but it just fucking goes to show the, the, the level of the internet today. Yeah, so there was a lot of controversy about the amount of people here, um, Venna. But that was the first time I met ben Venner. Then I actually tried to get the, the fight stopped. He called me and said that I couldn't win the fight. And he just tried to get me stopped. And he came just to make sure that everything was going to be safe. Um, the, the lad that was there, like, doing the waving and making sure I was all right. Um, yeah, he shouldn't have done that. But he was, again, he was another one that was just concerned. Um, yeah, like, if, if I could change the fight again, I, 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 would, I would definitely tell him to shut his mouth and not do that. But... It's happened and I didn't know that was going on, so yeah, there's, there's that as well. Um, I didn't know any of the other lads here, I didn't know the fields, I didn't know anyone. I turned up, just me and Brian Morrow on our own. I, every, everyone else here I just met, so it was only other people, anyone else that came was on, on, on the other people that came. So yeah, that, that, that's cleared that up. But this is where the magic happened.
Tired. The more you're working, mate. Listen, listen, boys. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, they've both been really impressive since they come over. I mean, Gary's one of the toughest lads about, isn't he? And Robbie's just yeah. kind of exploded onto the scene, kind of similar to the lad when Danny Christie did, to be honest with you, when he, with kind of the underground stuff that he did. So I think this is going to be a good test for Robbie. Right, Gary's going to be a real tough test for him, to be fair. Gary's uh, got a real good pedigree behind him, being an ex-pro, and he's, I mean, he finished the fight with half his face hanging off. One of the worst cuts I've seen in Ben McAvoy fight in that, and he just... He didn't take a backward step the entire fight. I've been uh, doing a bit of filming with Robbie and Gary over the last few days, and the um, obviously they've got respect for each other. There's no like hate or anything there, but they're fucking both up for this fight. Like, yeah, 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 both of them are really keen. Yeah, they both know it's a massive fight for them, but I think whoever comes out on top is going to be kind of going to the top of the division. Gary thinks that this fight is just going to be a walk in the park for him. He's very, very confident, but. His confidence and his, I don't know, his stupidity, like. I definitely think he has passed his time. Now it's my time. I don't know, I don't know if he's just got people throwing smoke up his ass, or if he's just backward. I want to, I want to make it awful. I want it to be just a five round beat down. I want to open up them scars. Do you know, I'm there to do the fighting. That's what I do best, and, and he'll see that. I don't actually want to finish him. I want to just make a five rounds of help. He's going to be chasing me and chasing me. You know, he's getting all these, these turkey teeth now, a 28 year old. He must be expecting fucking bats to the gob. When I'm walking up them scars and his face is going to be an absolute mess. And you see his big long nose? I'll snap it all over his face on. But little does he know I'm one of the toughest kids about. There's no way that he is just going to walk through me. which are run every month and we also have um, different styles of people so there's people who don't normally train at all and there's people who are elite athletes like, like
like Robbie. And towards Robbie's section about doing this training is the strength and condition that he's going to benefit in fighting, doing weights, doing resistance training, and being part of a group. When you're part of a group like this, it makes you want to push yourself more. So it's going to help Robbie, not even just this fight, but all of his up and coming fights that he's got coming up. And um, yeah, I just think that'll be really beneficial for any fighters to not even so much get to my gym, but just to get some type of strength and conditioning because the game's changing now. Um, it's more so back in the day it was you're not drinking water and you're not touching any weights. Now it's it's transformed it the way it should be. There's plenty of resistance, plenty of weight training, and I just think for the future all fighters should be getting this done. For for bare knuckle to come on the scene like as as it does and to get the numbers behind it and the publicity behind it. I think, I wouldn't say so much it's gonna take over boxing, but I think it's just gonna be on level with boxing at the moment. There's more people getting involved and leaving boxing or going to the, to the bare knuckle. And as long as it's safe and as long as it's done properly, I can't see why it won't, won't reach the potential that all the boxing fights have. Um, like the fight that you've got with Gary Fox and, and Robbie. Foxy's obviously he's come from a boxing background and Robbie's just done basically everything to do with combat so that fight alone I think could make more people think you know what I'm not going to be doing boxing much more I'm going to go on to see this is more exciting it's more fun and you look at the likes of, of like Robbie and Foxy it's a 50-50 fight some of the shows you go to now with boxing you know who's going to win before you even get in the ring so to me I think that will just take over Find, like, and stuff, you always come down to the beach like Robbie. Yeah, it's on a doorstep, isn't it? Don't realise how lucky you are to have it, really. Especially in the summer, you know, you've got the arcades over there, fish and chips. And you forget a thing, like, not, not everybody has a beach. Some, some are in, like, the centre of the country where they've got to tra travel, like, an hour or two to get to a beach. It takes us, like, five minutes, if that. session of the day. Um, I've done boot camp this morning with a body doctor. Um, I've been at MMA at 10 o'clock and now we're going to Eddie L Woods and we're going to train in the boxing ring. Got some lads coming for sparring, some pad work and um, that's at 6.30. Finishes off nicely. The camp with Foxy's only just started so we've only just started getting strict. Um, but I always train, I'm always doing something, you know, whether it's boxing, MMA, kickboxing, I'm always doing something. The only time I'm sat about really is, you know, holidays or if I think fucking hell I need a couple of days off here. Um, I had a little bit of time off training due to work commitments and the job that I had, I had to work away, so I'd been over in Finland and France. Uh, so training was very, like, limited and restricted. Um, still managed to do stuff, but not, not enough to have a fight. Um, now that I've got a job at home, I was really training full time again and you know, really enjoying it. So really looking forward to see how far we can take this bare knuckle. Oh, Foxy's got some good trainers, so if they've got any idea about them, they're not going to just try and walk forward and stand there and bang. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm trying to just, you know, prepare, prepare for everything. Loads of different types of sparring, different styles. And yeah, just, just be prepared, man. He's a local lad, everybody knows him, and even now that I've took a fight, I, uh, I went for a drink for my last uh, drink before I camp down the marina in Hartlepool and I had people coming over me saying like oh I can't believe you're fighting Foxy 
like uh, as if he's like this fucking Terminator. Oh, he's stuffing me, you know. I'm like, aye, fucking cheers, so I'm on, mate. <laughs> Give me compliments. <laughs> but yeah, um, everybody knows who he is. And do you know what? A part of me is glad that people think that. And you know, they're, they're doubting me. Because when I do get the job done, make it look effortless they're gonna think fucking hell if they think that about Foxy imagine this when I'm absolutely dismantle them sell a massive amount of tickets I know Foxy does as well and obviously all them are going to them to win so as you said you know like the Paul's been like 50-50 which makes it a bit more exciting um, yeah I don't think it's 50-50 Foxy here. So, uh, should be a good scrap to be fair. Uh, see Foxy being a bit of a brawler. It's heavy. He's naturally bigger than Robbie. Heavier than Robbie. Uh, it, it's at a heavier fight, at heavier weight than Robbie should be fighting at. But like I said earlier on, he's stupid. <laughs> there's, no, there's no one. There's no one like form at my weight, is there? Like we've got no choice. And until we go and fight John Dodson over in America, then. I want to do it, I've got yeah. uh, that's the lowest weight really. I don't think people see that though, I don't think people realise that, they just think you're uh, I don't know, what they think, trying to just make a name or just be a stupid or you like, you're just fighting anybody, which is like, people won't see behind, like, if he is no one for you to fight, or what you're going to do, sit in the shelf, and yeah. go rusty, you know, like, on paper, Foxy is a boxer, but this isn't boxing, and I think, I honestly believe the bare knuckle is more suited to the smaller groups, like the MMA style of boxing yeah. because there is no gloves and you can you can clinch. grab and hold and clinch so we'll see how it pans out but and uh, uh, I think we've, uh, we've got a game plan that will uh, just like overtake Rock, uh, Foxy's style I think Foxy's got a style that's very beatable you know he's been big before so the game plan that way you've got I think it'll be it's still that would very one of our fight for us Train Robbie's like in the, in the same gym since he was a baby <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since he was about 16, wasn't it? Uh, when I started the gym. But it was all MMA back then. Um, but then it was King of the Streets, wasn't it? Yeah. When you um, really like uh, I feel working on like, uh, like how not to get bit. You know, like, where I get <laughs> what, what, what did you think of it when he said he was going on King of the Streets? So when Robbie first said he was going on King of the Streets, I just thought. <laughs> 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 you know, I was like, what about the eye gouging and that? Like, you only get two eyes, don't you? Uh, and it's just like, you don't get paid if you get gouge eyes. Yeah, it was like, fair play. But, you know, and it's just, uh, yeah. It's just game, innit? Stupid. So we, we got in and uh, we were just working on, like, how not a bite. You know, where to keep your head when you've got all of them. So yeah. Always, always head under the chin, so you can't bite your forehead, can you? So. It was just basically used our MMA knowledge to, uh, yeah. Like we don't go in blind. We watch it, we do study. All these people say I don't do this and that. They're lying. We watch, we plan and we prepare. And just like how Decker fell, we have a plan for Foxy too. And if he sticks to it, who knows? Might just be the fight of the night. They're a really good boxer. Um, we just felt really good. Felt like I could keep that pace up for another five rounds. So we're doing a wake up now, 
this is the worst part apart from the dieting. Um, so the other, you've got to start off at the beginning of the week water loading. So what that consists of is you you drink ten liters of water, eight liters of water, six liters of water, four to five hundred mil if you need it. Um, people do it differently, but that's how I've been shown and it works for me. Um, and then once you get the Friday night, uh, Thursday night, sorry, um, they'll get in the bath, minimum 42 degrees, you'll do 20 minutes, uh, you'll jump out, dry off, put a bit of sweet set on, sweat suit if you want to, I personally don't, but I know people that do, um, jump in some towels, get wrapped up, do the over here, wrap your head up, another 20 minutes, dry off, check your weight, and go again. You do that until the weight's off. I've been pretty lucky that, you know, I'm fighting that weight class above, so I've kept the weight on, and now I don't have much to cut. So it's nice and easy for me. Um, so I feel great. Um, I'm guessing some of the fighters won't feel as well as what I do. Come on. Right, Just starting now, bro. Division we go. Crescent Tools brings you the numbers for Gary Fox versus Robbie Brown. Another one of these fights, you know, everything's very similar. What in height difference, exact same reach, very similar on everything else. Back to 
So my next fight is going to be the beginning of April, and that's with Big FC. Um, it's looking like it's going to be Milton Keynes, and I've got an opponent. Uh, he's a very tough guy. Um, he's been about forever. You know, he's been a pro in his game for a long time. Um, he had a first round knockout headline in the previous Big FC prospect series. So it's a very tough fight, but it's more back down to my natural, well, more of a natural weight. Losing fight 56 kilo going to be at 61, so I'm happy about that. I mean, it was pretty clear in the Foxy fight that he was a lot bigger and a lot stronger than what I was, and I was like just too small for him. Um, so I think when I'm fighting at my normal weight, I'll be able to hurt people rather than the punches just bouncing off them, you know, not having no effect. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. down to Fano's, get some training with Foxy, Tommy and Dan, uh, just get some help for my next fight. Obviously me and Foxy fought before, um, I just think that they'll, they'll take my game on leaps and bounds you know, for my next fight. 100% round proper fighters, you know what I mean? It's a different game, isn't it? You know, it's, a bit, it's, it's more like boxing, you know what I think? Bare Sports, you can see the sportsmanship still there, people see bare knuckle as a slightly built the spark and it's a bunch of folks. But we go and have a fight, we had a drink, we went out and had a drink together, some food. Now we're training, we're going to continue with training, both help each other out for our next fight. So. Oh, yeah. We've done plenty of talking about the training when we're on the drink now. That's how I'm training again. <laughs> <laughs> Nine times out of ten it doesn't come off when it's cracking in a pub, does it? You know what I mean? Did you ever think you were going to train together before the fight? Well, because we, you live fairly close to each other, don't you? Yeah. Well, if the fight never happened, we'd have probably ended up training anyway. Because I was always looking to, to better my boxing because I'm not a boxer. So, I like I'm especially when I fought Foxy, he's a boxer. So trying to fight him when I'm not a boxer, I knew it was going to be be hard work anyway. So I just need like I would, I'd been trying to get help on my boxing. You know, I went to Mickey Terrell's gym, a couple of other gyms, some amateur gyms, uh, just to get some help. Uh, so if we never fought, I'd have probably just contacted either him or Fano to to get some help anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I said it as soon as the final bell, I said it in the ring, didn't I? Right. I had it in my head, you know, like, I would, I would pan out. I thought, you know, like, that sort of game, I thought I had too much off. And I just thought, you know, like, with them being so close, off from the, you know, they start to come and help out and we'll train together, you know what I mean? And obviously, because uh, there's parts of his game what I would like to pick up myself, you know, like, I was no, I I, had, I would be far too strong and close, but I didn't want to be in close because it, you know, it was very very hard. You know what I mean? So I would mind picking up from 
from them, you know, like parts of them parts of the world, do you know what I mean? Just help each other out. 100%. What was your thoughts on the whole fight and the link up after it, Danny? <clears throat> it's what it's all about, is it not? You know, it's, it is what it is. There was no personal between them anyway. You could see there was sort of uh, how much both of them wanted to win, and I liked them both. You know, I, it was it was one of them. It was you know uh, just going to enjoy the fight. I just did, wins, wins. It, it was just one of them. I did enjoy watching it. I think that was I shouldn't have watched it to be fair. You know, I stood there and I, I shot my bolt with adrenaline just watching their fight, and I, I had to go in a couple of fights after that. And uh, you know, it was one. Of, it was what it was. But it was a great fight to watch. I've watched it back two or three times. Two good lads to train with, and uh, this gym itself, I just love coming here. I've had about four or five sessions here now. This is rough old spit and sawdust type setup, but it's a yeah, brilliant gym. And obviously, this isn't getting released yet, but you're all going to be fighting on the same card, aren't you, in Milton Keynes? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. so the dates work out. When, sometimes when fighters are they're on different dates, you know, they, they, they're sparring at different times and, you know, they're doing a bit of strength for long runs and we're doing everything at the same, you know, the same pace because we're, we're all, we're all, you know, we're all fighting on the same date, so we'll be able to get plenty done together, you know, like, if, if I have a trip down Danny's well, I'll be on the phone with Robin if he wants to jump in and come down with us or when Danny comes down here, obviously, he can jump in here and when there's a few, few in the gym, it's always there, uh, when you feel like you're, you're tired a bit and the man beside you is brain away, you just... Yeah, and just because um just because I lost that one fight doesn't mean it's game over for me. I've lost fights before in the past and before I lost that fight I won sixteen in a row within a year or burn up. Um people are saying the hype train's derailed, the hype train's still there. You know what I do when the train's coming, get off the fucking track. Chill chill motherfucker. <laughs>